guys, welcome to the World is Travel channel. I'm opening a new country for myself, France. I've never been here before and I'm so excited to take you on my journey to Bordeaux. What a charming city you are, Bordeaux. I wish I had more time to explore you, but it's a chance to come back once again. I'll share the list of the places to visit in Bordeaux that I like the most. I have only one day in Bordeaux and I'm curious if it's enough to explore the main sightseeing places in the city, so let's see! I love starting my itinerary with the gates and today's not an exception. I'm gonna start my day in Bordeaux with Porte Calo that used to be the main gate to the city of Bordeaux. It was built in the 15th century so it's pretty ancient. The 35 meters tall Porte Calo was integrated within the city walls. The monument combines defensive and decorative elements. It is said that the name Calo comes from the rocks once used to blast ships in the docks. The first impression of Bordeaux is very good, like every street is so good, I didn't expect much, honestly, I thought it's a really small town and like it would be enough for me to walk here for one day, but no, it's beautiful. Trust me, getting lost in the streets of Bordeaux is a must-do thing while exploring the city. I guess you see the reason why. It's an architectural masterpiece. cozy restaurants and cafes in Bordeaux, so I stopped by for a croissant and my favorite filter coffee. The Grosse Cloche is an impressive 18th century bell tower and gate in Bordeaux. It houses one of the largest and oldest bells in France, known as La Clemence. It's not just a bell tower, it's a symbol of Bordeaux's past. The massive bell once told alarms echoing through the streets.
The Miroir d'Eau is a remarkable water mirror located in front of the Place de la Bourse. It's one of the world's largest reflecting pools, providing beautiful reflections of the surrounding architecture. As you cross the road, you'll see the Place de la Bourse, an elegant square in Bordeaux designed in the 18th century. The square is a masterpiece of neoclassical architecture. It was laid out by architect Anne-Jacques Gabriel and signified the dramatic opening up of the historic center to the river Garonne. After I finished exploring the Place de la Bourse, I came across an incredibly beautiful square in Bordeaux. Place du Parlement was designed in an Italian style with an elegant fountain in the center. Fun fact about me. At school I had to learn French, like for three years or something, but I didn't succeed at all. I didn't like the language as much as English and uh, uh, it was too difficult for me. Like, uh, the language for me doesn't have any logic. The grammar is super difficult. Uh, the pronunciation is just a disaster for me. Like, so I quit it. But the city is wonderful. <laughs> it's still wonderful. The National Opera of Bordeaux, also known as the Grand Theatre, is another neoclassical masterpiece. The National Opera is a place where art meets elegance. It is home to world-class opera and ballet performances. I noticed the crowd in front of the Grand Hotel de Bordeaux, which is located on the same square as the opera. People were waiting for a celebrity to come out of the hotel, but I didn't get who the celebrity was. You know, it's so different to Spain, where everyone is so tranquila. Here, people are hurrying up somewhere. Also, there are so many Spanish guys here. I hear Spanish everywhere, and sometimes I want to speak it. You know, I forget that I have to switch to English here. I do not know French, but it's located very close to Spain actually, to the northern part of it, like Bilbao, Pamplona, yeah, I'll have to double check the map, but it's like very close. The monument to the Girondins is a majestic fountain with a story to tell. It pays tribute to the Girondins, brave politicians of the French Revolution. The water dances just as history unfolds. The monument features a column, statues and intricate details, making it a notable landmark. The next place I'm gonna check is Palais Guelen. I'm not sure if it's correct. Uh, that's the remains of Roman amphitheater, so it should be interesting. Palais Guillen is the ruins of a Roman amphitheater, showcasing Bordeaux's ancient history. It was once used for gladiatorial contests and could accommodate up to 15,000 spectators. Jardin Public, or the Public Garden, is an oasis in the heart of Bordeaux. The garden houses a library and a museum of natural history. Also, there are many attractions available for children, such as puppet theater, swings, and playgrounds.
This public garden features beautiful landscaping, tree-lined paths, and a serene lake, offering a peaceful escape from the city's hustle and bustle. Via in Madrid, it's like Istiglal in Istanbul. Yeah, so basically, I understand why people are here shopping, and also, I believe this is one of the longest shopping streets in Europe, if I'm not mistaken. St. Catherine or St. Catherine Street is one of Europe's longest shopping streets, known for its vibrant atmosphere. It's a prime destination for shopping, dining and enjoying the city's culture. The St. Andrea Cathedral, a masterpiece of Gothic architecture, dates back to the 12th century. It served as a significant stop for pilgrims traveling to Santiago de Compostela and is known for its stunning stained glass windows and captivating acoustics. The cathedral is a perfect example of the Romanesque and Gothic styles. The building suffered from a devastating fire in the 19th century. All of the furniture was replaced with items from other churches. Also, St. Andre Cathedral hosts several cultural events and festivals throughout the year. One of the most popular is the International Organ Festival, which takes place every summer. There is actually one more city gate that was built in the 18th century. I didn't know about that. And, uh, and yeah, I also want to check it out. This neoclassical gate was known as Dolphin's Gate until the French Revolution. Atop the arch are symbols of Bordeaux, such as the coat of arms and the towers of the Close Cloche. The 
Pont de Pierre used to be the only bridge to connect the city's historic center and La Bastide district for about 150 years. It opens a wonderful view of Bordeaux. I was a bit disappointed by the color of the river. It's literally gray because of the dirt. On my way back to the city center, I decided to see what the Miroir d'Or looks like during the sunset. As you see, it's not the best time to enjoy the view. All I could see was the sunlight. I'm actually very tired. I didn't have enough sleep tonight. Like two or three hours is not enough for me at all. And I didn't sleep in the plane and I feel like I'm so done for the day like I have no energy but the only thing that can save me is food food and wine I didn't dare to skip this exciting experience trying Bordeaux wine in Bordeaux I searched for the most popular places to try regional wine in the city center and came across Le Barravon. I must say it's a really popular place according to the line to enter the bar. I had to wait for an hour or so to be able to come in and taste the wine, but it was worth the wait. prices are affordable in this place. Since I had no idea what kind of wine to order, I just guessed. I ordered Chateau Claude Bellevue 2018 and it was too firm for me. So, it's time to get back home and bring some bright memories from this trip. Thank you for watching this video and please don't judge my French as I wanted to preserve the original names when talking about the places to visit. Let me know if you've been to Bordeaux and what memories you have of this beautiful city.